Hi, so today I'm going to talk about how I created these curtains for the set for my visual novel. Uh, this is a set for the interior of the reception, uh, which I will show another time. But today I just want to talk about how I made these, these uh, nice curtains. So I'm going to start with creating a new scene. I'm not going to save anything here. Just give it a second. Much better. Okay. So uh, to start with, let me create a simple polygon plane. So the way I have my wire set up is that my z-axis is pointing up, so my planes end up uh, just, uh, you know, vertical, like a curtain would. But obviously a curtain is not a square, so the next thing to do would be to scale this down a bit. So let me just make it a little bit more rectangular, a little bit taller. Yeah, that, you know, that looks doable. Now, um, before you start using end cloth for this. Uh, one thing you want to do is go to the shape node for uh, this object. You can get it here in the channel box and increase the number of subdivisions. So with uh, dynamics and the more the subdivisions, the better. So I am going to, uh, I think I'm just going to go with 30 subdivisions for the height and width each. So as you can see now we have uh, yeah, quite a few vertices, so so that these def the deformers that we apply to this later, they can you know, nicely fold the plane to make it look like a fabric. Okay, with this done, uh, it's a good idea to do some UV mapping right away, uh, because if if you're going to apply a texture to this later on and you've not done any UV mapping, then uh, it's going to be quite hard. So because this plane is aligned and uh, it's on the XZ axis, so I really just need to take a planar project projection on the Y axis. So all I'll do is I'll select this object and I'll say create a, a planar mapping along the Y axis, apply, and that's it, right? And now I've got UVs. If you want, you can take a look at the UV editor to see what the UVs look like. They look a bit like this, which is okay. It's good enough. I mean, I can scale this up to make it rectangular, but I could do that at any time. The important point is that I've got all these faces here now in my UV space. So if I ever want to texture this, it's ready to go. Okay, so I'm just going to close the UV editor and get, so that I get rid of that checkerboard. Right, so the next step is to go to your uh, to your uh, shelf here and uh, center pivot, delete construction history, and freeze transform. So now this plane is where... Uh, is now at the origin. We've done some subdivisions and stuff on it, so it's ready. Now what we do is we switch over to the FX menu set, and we go to end cloth, and we say create an end cloth. Right. So, um, so you can see an end cloth node has been created here. Um, one thing I would like to do is I would just like to set my animation time frames going from 0, 0 to a maximum of 700 frames, and I want to see the whole range, so which is already there. Okay. Okay, now that I have a polygon plane and an end cloth, the next thing I would like to do is create a quick polygon cylinder, which I'm going to use. Wow, that's rather big. So, which I'm going to use to uh, act as a control, as a, as a curtain rod, which will control the deformation and result in creating the nice folds in the curtain. So, obviously, this is this is way too big. So, I'm going to scale this down considerably. Maybe make it something like 0.1. That too seems a bit big. So, maybe 0.05. Uh, rotate it in the z-axis by 90 degrees uh, and scale it up a bit so just so that it actually looks like a you know some kind of curtain rod something like that let's see hmm. yeah okay maybe make it a little bit uh, smaller so um, so maybe convert this 0.3 and uh, scale that to 0.3 Okay, so that looks all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move it up. Just uh, I'm going to zoom out a bit and move it up just ab above the, the plane that I created. So it's already aligned. So you, as you can see, that's all fine. So the next thing to do is to attach the edge of this uh, plane to the cylinder. All right, sorry. Before I do that, I need to increase the number of subdivisions. So I'll just go to select object mode. Oops, sorry. That's not what I wanted. Object mode. And I'll go to the shape node in the channel box, and I'm going to increase the number of subdivisions on along the long axis, the height, maybe by uh, say, well, you know what? I'll also keep it to 30. There we go. Um, okay. Now, what I need to do now is switch to vertex selection mode. Select the top row of vertexes there. Shift select this cylinder, and then go to end constraint, and select point to surface. 
when you see this when you when this happens you see that these lines have been created and the edges of this uh, curtain are are bound to points on the cylinder so if you then make changes to the cylinder it will make changes to this to this plane but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the first scale uh, frame of my timeline and i'm going to press s to key um, all keyable frames in the channel box so um, and I, by the way i need to do it on the cylinder object so we'll go here i'm going to press s that is going to key all the cable attributes in the channel box and then i'm going to go to say somewhere like frame i don't know 300 something like that and i'm going to scale down the cylinder to roughly half its size maybe around there and then i'm going to press s again on on frame 300 uh, just give it a moment for the simulation to compute as you can see and now if you scrub the frame you can see i'm just uh, just scrubbing through the animation so on frame zero the curtain is flat and over the next few frames as the cylinder de uh, deforms you can see it modifying the plane into something that is beginning to look a bit like a curtain All right so that's a basic curtain there are a few tweaks i would like to make so i would to make this look a little bit better so i'm just going to go back to uh, start of the animation range and i'm going to select the end cloth node and then i'm going to go to the shape node this time i'm going to use the attribute editor to edit the the shape node so i've got the end cloth one shape node so first and foremost let's go to the collisions and make sure that collide and self collide are enabled which they are by default um potentially i'm thinking this thickness is uh potentially maybe make it a little bit more so 0.15 uh, uh self collide width scale a little bit less maybe around two if i go down to dynamics properties here one thing to do is to change the bend resistance which is over here to something like 0 0.05 and compression resistance to something like half of that value right so around five okay so the dynamic simulation has finished computing so i'm just going to scrub across the frames and as you can see the plane is now being bent into a curtain which looks a little bit better than the last time so now you can actually go beyond the point i said the key keyframe and you know uh, and let the dynamic simulation settle which can take quite a while find a frame where uh, you know you you like the look of the curtain so maybe i don't know maybe there right just as an example remember that you are tweaking some of the set settings on the end cloth uh, shape node will give you slightly better effects but this is just showing how it's done just select the plane itself which has now been deformed as you can see you can now just duplicate using uh, say control d and you get now a new plane and just scoot this across on the side and there you have it that's that's a curtain like object which you can now use for your projects if you want another one all you need to do is just scrub further on the timeline to a point where you you know you like the the fold on the fabric a bit better and again take the plane control d to make another copy and there you have two different types of curtains um, i use this technique on my project so you can see here if i uh, just open my set for a moment i'm not going to save this because i've already done all of this so what i did was i created four different types of curtains just using the same technique and because in, in my project uh, i've got the curtains the top of the curtains are covered and i'm not going to get super close to the curtain so it's not like it's the story of a you know of a bee or a fly or something that's you know sitting on a curtain and i need to get up super close so for me this kind of detail is well is more than enough and yeah that's how you make uh, curtains using n cloth in maya